Hello and welcome to another Ginge Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my predictions for IGCSE 0607 Paper 2 which is on the 8th of February and Tuesday the 25th of April 2023. So I'm going to start here with my topics to watch. Topics that usually go under the radar slightly but are definitely ones to be aware of. So for example here the modulus function. So remember those absolute value functions with those lines. That appears 46% of the time which is quite surprising surprising being a fairly small part of the course. So if you're looking for those higher marks, that is definitely a topic to consider. Volume surface area, which usually is a paper four style topic, is cropping up more and more often now on the paper two. So please do watch out for that, particularly at the top end. And unit conversions. And I want to talk about something very specific here on 2022, and that is converting between, say, square centimeters and square meters. So knowing the conversion between this and this, or even cubic centimeters and cubic meters. So please be aware of that. And of course, coordinate geometry, although it's slightly low here at 38%, when a question does appear, it can be a very big question. And often that is going to be perpendicular bisectors. Right, so on to the often topics. And this won't be a surprise to anyone that's seen my prediction videos in the past. This is logarithms, again, appeared quite often on the 2022 papers as well. And you can see an example question in front of you. So simplifying logs and being able to work out logs is a very, very important skill. Fraction skills, again, not as important as, say, on the 0580 paper, and it's generally towards the start of the paper too, but you do need to know how to do this to get your two or even three marks. Um, I haven't even, even included here algebraic fractions. I've kept that as a separate topic, but you can see here, being able to subtract two fractions, being able to add two fractions, you need to be able to do that, appearing just over half the time on the papers. Quadratics, now this is a new entry in its own right, and this includes both solving quadratics and being able to factorize them as well. Often a part of a question, as you can see here, this question here, 5x squared minus 6x minus 8. In this question, we want to factorize this. This can also tie into a topic I'm going to talk about here on inequalities. So please be aware how to solve those and also those more difficult car questions where you have a number in front of the x squared. On to a new topic which I've described here as types of number. It's probably the easiest topic in this whole prediction video, but you don't want to lose a couple of marks just by not knowing what a cube number is, or a lowest common multiple is, or a highest common factor. It does come up 54% of the time. You do need to pay these questions respect to make sure you get all three marks, for example, on this question one. On to statistics, again, more often on paper four, and we'll talk about that in the paper four prediction video, but it still comes up 54% of the time on the paper two. Generally, these tend to be stem and leaf diagrams, bar chart questions, uh, sometimes a mixture of mean questions as well, what I'd like to call a combined mean question. So you add an extra uh, number, and then, then you've got a new mean, what's the old mean, or vice versa. So just be aware that this can come up, and don't think it just comes up on paper four. On to non-calculator, trig, and Pythagoras. Again, they're really trying to catch you out to see if you know your sine 30s, your cos 30s, your tan 45s, and this is the way that they do it. This can tie into other topics as well. So notice you could get some third work as well with this kind of question. And on to inequalities. Again, this is appearing more and more often. What has come back specifically is this idea of linear programming. Now, if you're not sure what linear programming means, then do check out the video above, because I go through that for about 20 minutes or so, making sure you can do these kind of questions, often tie into coordinate geometry as well. But they could also ask you to solve an inequality like you see in front of you. And now onto the almost certain topics. Now there is no topic that appears more than 100% of the time on paper two. That's to be expected on a small paper like paper two, but there are certain topics that do appear very, very frequently. And one which you may be surprised by is expanding brackets. There is almost always a question that involves you expanding brackets. This can also tie in to a different skill. So for example, the question I found here from a recent past paper, this ties in thirds into that kind of question. So expanding brackets is usually not a just expand this kind of question, it will tie into some other topic. 
Now we've just mentioned CERT and notice CERT itself comes up 77% of the time. Again, generally the way that they test this is either adding two CERTs by doing some simplifying or like you see in front of you by rationalizing the denominator. If you do not know that phrase, then check out the video above because I go through a lot of work on CERTs to make sure you're ready for those exams. On to the reverse of expanding, which is factorizing always traditionally been a very common topic, and this is no exception in 2022 going into 2023. Uh, notice they like this idea of splitting the term when you're factorizing. So if you take something like this, for example, one plus a minus c minus ac, then you'll need to do a splitting the term method to do that. Again, I go through that in my all of our GCSE algebra video, which you'll see above. On to angle calculations that has been slightly overlooked in previous prediction videos, but the rise of questions dealing with exterior and interior angles, as well as those normal kind of questions with parallel lines, means it's definitely a topic to revise. And you can see a very typical kind of question. It's a whopping three marks to answer that kind of question. And once you know the tricks to actually do a question like this, these are three very easy marks. On to indices, again, has always been very, very popular. It generally is quite a small question, a one marker or a two marker. But again, just realizing that, for example, here, 64 to the power of third, this is simply just the cube root of 64. Notice this also fits into the types of number category because you need to know your cube roots as well as your cube numbers and square numbers. And on to probability. All I'm going to do here is just write in very, very big words, relative frequency. It comes up all the time on paper two. Again, I found another question for you in front of you, this part 7a, where they ask you relative frequency again. So please, for a paper two question, please know it. Occasionally, they will also do tree diagram questions too. And onto equations. Now this can be tested in many very different formats. Again, solving linear equations is quite common as is simultaneous equations, which we see below. And again, I've already had a separate topic on quadratics. But again, this is kind of a nice crossover topic where you get you to factorize a quadratic and then solve it afterwards. So this is the full outline of all the topics that come up. And again, the percentage in which they do come up. Like I mentioned in my 0580 video, uh, make sure you look at those sometimes topics too. Notice volume and area, which I mentioned at the start is at 46%. Again, look at coordinate geometry, 38%. Even rearranging formulae is still at 38%. So you need to take the sometimes topics seriously. And if you do want to revise your work on CERDs, then check out the video in front of you. Because I go through a really condensed form of what you need to know to really succeed in those CERD questions that do come up a lot of the time.